J.E. Maynard was born in the mountain community of Weaverville, near Asheville, in 1898. He left home at age 12 and spent the next dozen years working in cotton mills. Then in 1922, he came to Concord, got married, and settled down on a more or less permanent basis. J.E. had already learned to play a bit of banjo so he could accompany his fiddling brother-in-law, Roscoe Banks, at dances, and he went to work at mastering the fiddle as well. When his younger brother, Wade, came to Concord, they got to play music together. Shortly thereafter, the Mainers Mountaineers was born and began winning local fiddling and other talent contests. They also started appearing on several radio shows across the Carolinas and the Southeast. Do you think very much that changed 40 years ago? In 1939, J.E. had split from the band. He had another recording session for Bluebird, at which time he borrowed Clyde Moody and J. Hugh Hall from his brother Wade's entourage. During World War II, J.E. returned to Concord, and for the better part of the next two decades, he confined most of his playing to the Carolinas, Tennessee, and Virginia. He recorded again for King in 1946, with a band whose most prominent members were his sons, J.E. Jr., usually known as Curly, and Glenn, who developed into a quality bluegrass banjo picker. Fifteen years later, J.E. Maynard's Mountaineers cut two singles and an album for King. In 1962, he cut an album, The Legendary Family from the Blue Ridge Mountains. This led to the rediscovery of Maynard's Mountaineers by a new generation of fans across the U.S. After World War II, Maynard's group recorded for King Records in Cincinnati. During the urban folk revival of the late 1960s and early 1970s, there was a renewed interest in Maynard and his music, which led to him performing at numerous festivals and recording for the King Records, among other labels. Beginning in 1967, J.E. cut a series of albums for Uncle Jim O'Neill's Rural Rhythm label. He was a guest on the WWVA Jamboree and played numerous festivals while continuing to live modestly in his country home on the outskirts of Concord. In his later years, a banjo picker named Morris Herbert became the main vocalist in J.E.'s band. J.E. Maynard stayed active in music until his death in 1971 as he prepared to leave home for a festival appearance in Culpeper, Virginia. Ah, ah, ah.